Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy, and this is Connor. You want to say hi? Say hi, Connor. If you're new here, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it, so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. He really needs mommy, I think. <laughs> Do you want to say hi? Today we'll be doing five Dollar Tree DIYs for your farmhouse home decor. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. Do you know how to give a thumbs up? <laughs> and now, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Say bye. For our first project, we're going to be using four of these triangular frames four of the succulents with the little pots, and then we'll be using our Waverly chalk paint in ballet slipper and white, and then some wax in antique, our painter's tape, and then some hot glue, our scissors, E6000, and our wire cutters. And I just went outside to find some sticks and I just started pulling some off and cutting them off of my tree from outside. And this was hard to do while filming at the same time, but I just got an assortment of different thicknesses and I left the pieces on that were sticking out. It was a super pretty flower and I just thought I'd show it to you guys. It was already wilting by the time I got it in though. So I'm just going to get my frames ready and I'm taking out the insides and pulling off the little medallion at the top and I always keep those in case I need those for a later project. So I'm just pulling up the little tabbies from behind and I'm going to get them all ready and put together in the shape that I want. So Dollar Tree frames are notorious for not being exactly the same size. So I just put them together and moved them around until I got the best fit and they were as close as I could get them. And then I'm going to measure the very bottom where the three frames are put together because I'm going to cut a piece of wood that size to make a shelf right there. And then for the top triangle, I'm going to measure inside that bottom piece because I'm going to cut another piece of wood for inside there. So I first took this one by four and they call it a one by four, but it's really only three and a half inches wide. And I'm going to cut that down to nine and a quarter inches. And then I'm also going to use a one by six, which again is only five and a half inches wide. And that'll be for our bottom shelf, but I'm going to cut that one down to 22 and a quarter inches. And so I'm just using my miter saw out in the garage and I cut those down. And for the top shelf, the smaller one, which is the one by four, I'm going to trace the inside angles of that frame so that it will fit right inside of the bottom part of the frame. So this might not be the best way to do this, but I just put it on its side because I couldn't move the saw itself to do that miter. And I don't know what the degree of angle is on this. I just followed my line that I drew and then just cut down on it. And then I'm going to use my rotary sander to sand down my shelves. And I really like this sander because first of all, it's super light and I like that, but also it's really easy to change the sanding discs. You just pull the old one off and stick another one on there. And so it just makes it really easy and I like easy. So after I get them all sanded, I took my frames outside and I had planned to spray paint them, but because they're like MDF or something, the paint was just not sticking to it and I had already sanded them down. So I thought it was gonna be a really easy paint job, but it just didn't stick. And so I ended up having to hand paint those with my chalk paint and brush. I'm also going to be painting the cardboard backings of the frames so they have little hangers on them and I just used my Cricut spatula to pull up the little tabs from the hangers and then pulled the hangers right out. And then I'm going to use the bottom little planter portions of these succulents so I just pulled those out of the styrofoam and I'm going to use these as feet for my little shelf. So I just got everything that I needed to paint all ready and so now I'm going to cut down and measure my branches because I'm going to be painting those as well. When I cut them off and got all the leaves off I wanted to leave some of the little twigs that were sticking out in different directions on there so that you could tell that they were actually twigs. So because there is that little hole from where I took the hanger out I want to make sure that there's one main twig right in the middle and that'll cover up the hole so you can't see it. I also made sure that I kept all the twigs that I had cut at the right angles and 
for each of the frames. I kept those all together so that it didn't get confusing as to which twig went where. So I'm gonna be painting the backboards of the frames in a really light pink ombre effect. So I wanted to start with a white background first since these are black and it would make it a little bit easier to blend all those pretty colors together. So I ended up painting the little feet in the white chalk paint, but I had contemplated adding a little bit of gold because I do have some gold paint that I could have used. And so that's just an option. I love the look of pink and gold and white all together. So if you're doing this project, you have options. So here I started putting my twigs inside of the frames and I should have put my backboard in first because I did have those little pieces that were sticking out of the twig. And so another option is to leave the backboard off because I did like the look of that as well. It really reminded me of a winter scene. And so I might try this in my winter line, but for this project, and since I did wanna have that backboard color, I end up taking them out and then I'm gonna glue them onto the backboard once I get that painted. So in order to paint this, I use some painter's tape to put my triangles all together, and then that way I have one cohesive piece that will run through the entire background. So to paint the ombre, I started with white and then just gradually added a little bit more of the ballet slipper chalk paint into the white and then just kept going down and I kind of separated it in quarters. So I did about a fourth of the way down with just white and then added some pink and then another quarter of the way, another dab or two of the pink and then so on and so forth until it got to the darkest pink at the bottom but all of it is super light and I didn't want it to be too childish and have it be too bright so I think it looks really pretty in the end. So once my paint had dried I took all of my twigs and placed them again where they were supposed to be and made sure that they were all in the right positions and then once I got all of them placed then I'm going to go back in with my hot glue and attach them to that backboard. So now I'm going to stain my shelves and so I took some Waverly Wax in Antique and mixed it in with some water and then that's gonna lighten it up so that it's not too terribly dark. And I'm just gonna brush it on there and then wipe it off with a paper towel until I get it to the lighter shade that I want. And then I want it to have the grain showing through, so that's why I want it a little bit lighter. And then I'm gonna go back in with a super dry brush with my white chalk paint and just go over it very lightly to kind of give it a distressed salt oak look. That's hard to say, salt oak oak finish <laughs> so I'm just gonna do that and then I'll do it on the small one as well and then try to get those two to match even though it seems like they're a little bit different color in the wood to start with so now I'm gonna attach my small shelf using my e6000 and some hot glue and the e6000 will keep it in place permanently while the hot glue will attach it immediately and then I'm gonna go back in with my smaller twigs and place those on the backboard like I did with the other triangles. And if any of the glue seeps out, you just wanna get that off right away so that it doesn't make a stain on your paint. But if it does, or you wait too long, you can just touch it up with the white chalk paint. So now I'm gonna attach my three bottom frames by putting my E6000 and hot glue on each of the sides. And then I'm gonna make sure that the bottoms are completely flat because even if they don't match up at the top, that's okay, but I wanna make sure that it sits flat against my bottom shelf. So after I put the three frames together, then I'm gonna take that whole piece and attach it to my shelf, doing the same thing with the E6000 and the hot glue, staggering the lines so that they don't mix with each other. So you guys often hear me say to do as I say and not as I do. Well, this would be one of those moments. What I should have done was put my triangles together first and then added my shelves so that I could then lay it on the front side and then put my popsicle sticks onto the back of it so that it was easier to push down and get those in place for more security. But either way you do it, it still works out, but 
I put the shelves on first, so then I'm just gonna put my popsicle sticks in the back just to give it some more security. So then I'm gonna take some E6000 and hot glue and attach my little feet to the bottom of my shelf. And then I measured in to make sure that they were even and I put all four on the bottom of that shelf. And here it is all finished. And I know it was a lot of work, but I sure love how this turned out. I just styled it with a bunch of cutie patootie Dollar Tree items and my Bible from my Grandma Yvonne when I received my first Holy Communion 45 years ago. Gosh, that's a long time ago. But I love how this turned out. I think we're going to be using it in my sweet friend's apartment makeover that we're doing and that'll be at the end of july and so i really like showing you guys how you can incorporate some of the crafts that we do into your actual decor so stay tuned for that but i love how this turned out and i hope you guys like it too for our next project i'm going to be using this dollar tree frame and then some jute twine and some white string, also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna paint this frame. This was from a project that I did previously and I messed up the frame because I used acetone on it. So it kind of ate up the black and made it discolored. So I ended up not using it for the project that I was doing it with and then just set this aside knowing I could use it at some point in the future. Now I had made this cross a while back also for another project and it ended up not working out, but I lost that footage of me wrapping it in that jute twine and string. And as you can see, I just wrapped it with that farmhouse pattern with those stripes, the one thicker and then the two outside thinner ones. So I'm sorry you can't see that. But now for the middle, I just painted it white to cover up the roses on there. And then I'm gonna take some jute twine and wrap it around my three fingers, kind of spread out. But I wrapped it eight times and then I did it a second time with some more jute twine. And then I'm gonna tie those two together and then spread out the little flower petals and hot glue that to the middle of my cross. And I love when things fit together perfectly. And in this case, I knew I wanted to showcase my cross and it fit exactly inside of the frame. And I didn't even have to hot glue it or use any kind of adhesive. It just fit in there perfectly. And I was able to have it stand up and be completely secure. So after I got that in place, I'm gonna take my frame and with a pencil, I started writing our Lord's Prayer. And I thought the pencil was going to look better because it was more of a brownish gray color that would go with the jute twine. But in the end, I decided I didn't like it. It looked like it was just pencil. So I went back in with a black marker and went over the words. And I did it all the way around. And so at the bottom, the words are upside down. And then it's going to go all the way around twice and it works out exactly right. So then I just took some antique wax and added it to the edges of my frame to give it that faux wood finish. And then I went back in with my pen to rewrite those words and then it was done. And here it is all finished. And I think this is super, super sweet. This would be the perfect gift for somebody that needs encouragement or just to let them know you're thinking about them. It was really easy. The wrapping of the string and the twine was a little time consuming, but I think for the look and the feel of it, it's just kind of rustic and old fashioned looking to me. So I think this is a great piece. I would love to get it, but I hope you guys like it. For our next project, we're gonna be using four more of these triangle signs, some spare chain and some hooks. I end up using something else, but I'll show you that. And then our white chalk paint and antique wax and our hot glue gun, scissors, some E6000, our wire cutters and a ruler, no chenille stem. So for this project, it has more of a boho vibe to it. And this is actually gonna be for my niece. 
So originally I had planned to use the black and I like to get frames that I'm going to use in that color so that I don't have to paint them. But I do end up changing my mind and I change everything to the white and wood look that I love so much. So all I did was I measured down four inches on the first triangle and then I'm going to use my pliers to pull out the little tabs that hold in that backboard. And I'm not going to use the backboard in this project. These are going to be completely open. So after I pull those out, I'm going to take my painter's tape and attach all three of these frames together because I want to cut off the tips of all three. So in order to get a straight cut and make it perfectly even for all three of them, I'm going to attach them so that I just make one cut at the same time. So not only is the tape keeping the frames together, but I'm also putting it at the place where I want to cut. Because my frame can't go against the back part of my miter saw, it's easier if I have my tape there to guide me down as I'm cutting. So after I get it cut, I'm going to take my rotary sander and sand them all down. And I don't remember if this is where I had decided to go with the, no, I hadn't decided yet to go white, but I knew I was going to paint the tips anyway. Originally, this was going to be black and gold, but then I just couldn't do it. So it's going to go white and wood. So I just sanded down the areas. I left one of the triangles complete and didn't cut it down, but I'm gonna paint that tip in the same color that I'm gonna paint the other tips, which is gonna be the wood tone. So I masked it off with my painter's tape so that that would guide me and I would know where to stop. So because I want the wood tone, I first painted all of the tips white so that I could then put my Waverly Wax in Antique on top of that and it would show the true brown of that wood tone that I was looking for. So then I had decided to paint them all white because I knew the black was all wong. <laughs> I cracked myself up. So if I can get away with not painting frames or painting anything for that matter, I will try to skip that step. So, but in this case, I did have to paint them. Unfortunately, I had already masked off that complete triangle and so I didn't want to have to take the tape off and then paint it all and redo it. So I ended up doing the wood part first and then taking the tape off and then just painting the bottom portion white. So before I put everything together, I wanted to put my hooks in at the top because this is where the chain's going to go and I'm going to hang it from the top, which is actually the bottom of one of the triangles. So I started with these hooks and these are from Dollar Tree, but then they were a little bit too big. So I went and found some eye hooks in the garage and those were a lot smaller and easier to get in also. So I just screwed those in and measured so that they were even. And then because I was using scrap chain, I had to kind of put those together to make the right size that I wanted so that it would hang right. And these are from those hanging baskets from Dollar Tree. And so you guys know I don't throw anything away. So I had just enough to complete this project. So I just took off one of the links and then added the amount of chain that I needed to make it the right length. And then I decided I was gonna add a little bit of gold. So I took it outside and spray painted it with my gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. And then while that was drying, I put it all together. So I'm notorious for not getting things perfectly centered. So I took a piece of scrap wood and made a little template so I would be able to get those pieces in the exact same spot in the middle. And so when I was doing this, I put it together and I thought that this would be a super, super cute Christmas tree. So when Christmas comes around, we can do something with these triangular shaped signs again, if they still have them at the Dollar Tree. So I just used my E6000 and hot glue to get those put in place. And then I'm going to take the tips and attach those where it looks like it's just a continuous triangle going through the bottom of the one above it. 
So now to give this piece more security, I flipped it over and I'm gonna take some smaller popsicle sticks and cut those in half and then hot glue those right at the edges or the seams where I glued those together. And that just makes it stronger so it doesn't fall apart. And then once it's all nice and sturdy, I'll take my chain and attach it to the top and then do any touch up painting that I need to do where I messed it up and then it'll be done. So every now and then Dollar Tree just surprises me and they had these cute little marquee signs. They had X's or I think of this as kind of a cross and then they had some hashtags and other really cute things and I wanted to style this with it but I just thought I would show you that they had these and all you do is you put the lights in through the little holes and then it comes with little toppers that look like the round light bulb type thing and then just pop those in there and put a couple of batteries in it and it's so cute so anyway they had these at Dollar Tree but I just thought they were super cute and I thought I'd show you and here it is all finished and I think this is so pretty I love the wood and the white and then with the gold it's just so soft and precious and it is a little bit younger in style but if i had enough rooms i could totally do one in bohemian style i just think it's so pretty i think it's gonna look really good in my niece's space but for four dollars i think this is perfect it's also great for those areas where you want to do kind of a collage of different items all put together because it's longer and you need those to kind of make everything cohesive and pretty. So I love it and I hope you guys like it too. For our next Dollar Tree project, I'm going to be using four of these white and gold frames. This love decal with the pretty flowers on it. This wood arrow, which was in the crafter section. And then my white chalk paint and antique wax. And then my hot glue gun, scissors, wire cutters, and E6000. And so for this one, I took the jute twine off of the arrow and then pulled out the staples that were holding it on there and then took off the little tag, of course. And then I'm gonna use my Waverly Wax in Antique and just add some water to it and then do that whole staining process again and then wipe it off with a paper towel and then go back in with my white chalk paint and soften it up and give it some reverse distressing, I guess you could call it. So I'm just going in with the really dry brush and then adding it to it and then I go around the edges as well. So I really love this decal, no pun intended, but it was designed to have the LO over the VE and so it was attached at each of those letters. So I needed to cut those apart because I'm gonna attach one letter to each of my four frames. So I just kind of cut in between and where there was greenery or any kind of foliage, I just cut some of those leaves and went around it. I'm really liking the quality of the decals that Dollar Tree is carrying right now. And the letters are cut real close to the design so it doesn't just look like you're sticking a sticker onto something these are for the wall but obviously you can use them for whatever you want so i'm just going to take my frames and i took out the insides and then i had some paper some pink paper don't know where the footage went on this either, but I just cut out some pink pretty paper and put that in the backing. And then I'm gonna take my decals and put those on top of the glass of each of those frames. These say that they're removable. I probably will never remove them, but if you did wanna change it out or change for the seasons or whatever the case may be, you can do that with these. I always like to have things overhang or go out of bounds on some of my projects, but in this case, these roses were a little bit too close. There wasn't enough to hang over. So I just opened the frame back up and then laid it down on that glass. And then on the O, it did have a lot that was hanging over. And so I thought that was just super cute. So I just took my squeegee and made sure that it got nice and tight in that corner and then just overlapped that greenery and the pretties onto the frame. So now I'm gonna attach my frames together and I always double check now because <laughs> I have been known to put things together backwards. 
So I did this one spring project and it turned out to say GNURPS <laughs> instead of spring. So as silly as it sounds, you might want to check it. So then I'm going to take some big craft sticks and hot glue those at the seams and then that is going to give it some more security. I do keep the stands on the back of the frame so that this can stand up, but you could also hang this on a wall too. So after I get my craft sticks on, I'm going to then take my arrow and go to my miter saw and cut that right in half. And then I'm going to take the front part, the arrow, and I'm going to attach that to the middle of the front of the frames and then the back part on the other end. And so it's going to look like the arrow is going all the way through the word love. And here it is all finished and I am absolutely in love with this. This would be perfect for Valentine's Day, but I think love is good any time of the year. <laughs> so I wanted to incorporate that gold and white. And so again, not having to paint the frames was awesome. And it's super versatile so you can hang it or stand it. And it was probably the easiest of all of these DIYs, but I think it's one of the cutest. And even if pink isn't necessarily in your color scheme, this just goes to show you that you can find a decal and some frames and embellish it and you can make something beautiful. And in this case, it costs a total of $6. So I love it and I hope you guys like it too. For our final Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna be using two of these wire baskets, some rope that my sweet friend Denise from Texas sent me and she sent me a lot, and then some nylon straps from the Dollar Tree, as well as some wood beads that I get from Amazon for $12.99 and I'll have that in my Amazon store. And then my hot glue gun, scissors, and my wire cutters. So I got this idea from my beautiful and sweet friend Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses. I'm sure you guys have seen her channel before, but on the off chance that you haven't, I will have it listed in the description box below and the video where she makes this basket for a fiddle fig tree, I think it was. Anyway, I put these two together using my tie straps and I think I do it a little bit different than she did but I told you that we were doing my friend's apartment and so I'm going to be using this in her living room in that makeover. So I just attached them at the rims and then waited to tighten them until I was sure that they were in the right spot and that I could get it through the mesh of that wire. So after I got them all tight. I took my wire cutters and just cut off that top rim, which is the bottom of the basket. And this wire is super thin, so it was really easy to do. In fact, I think Megan did it with some scissors, if I remember right. So after I got that top part all the way taken off, and I'll keep that for something else, I'm sure. I have no idea what, but I will find something. And so I'm going to start folding over the edge right here just to kind of get the sharpies out of the way. Now I decided at the end that I wanted to roll it over the top of the rope once I'm done. And so if you do this project the way I'm doing it, instead of pulling that in, bend those outward and then you can wrap it over and it just works out better. So you'll see that towards the end. Anyway, so I'm just going to start with my white rope and I started at the very bottom and then just worked my way all the way up. And then once I got to the rim, I changed over to the regular nautical rope. So it's going to be two tone. And then I'm going to add one extra piece of rope at that middle part so that it sticks out a little bit more. When Megan did it, she took those rims off and then kind of spread out the mesh, which I think actually looks better. But either way is fine and it's going to be pretty no matter what. So to add my handles, I just took two pieces of rope and I'm going to feed it through the mesh and then I took some hot glue and some fabric. This is from burlapfabric.com. And I just took a piece and put a whole bunch of hot glue in there and then just laid this on top of it. I decided to put my finger protectors on because I have been burned before, 
but these finger protectors I got at Dollar Tree and I see those all the time now so chances are they will have them at your Dollar Tree as well and so I just added the hot glue and then put my rope into it and then put that fabric on top of it just for some more security and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and to make sure that I got them directly across from each other I took a skewer and stuck it through the hole and then that way I knew where to place my second handle. And then I'm just gonna keep wrapping and just go business as usual all the way up to the top. And then once I reached the top, I actually just got tired of wrapping. And so that was when I pulled my mesh over and I thought it kind of looked like stitching at the top of a handmade basket. So you could leave that part out and just keep going with the rope or you can wrap it over whichever way you like is totally up to you. But I always like to give you guys options. So now I'm gonna make a sweet little beaded garland to hang off of the handle of my basket. And I'm kind of cheating on this one. I had a sweet friend, Jen Ann Garner, show me how to make and tie off a tassel the correct way. And she was so sweet. She sent me an actual video to teach me how to do this. And so I haven't had a chance to actually dissect it and go over it and learn it right. So I will though, Jen Ann, and then I'm gonna show everybody how I can make the perfect tassel like you did. So what I'm doing on this one is I'm just threading on with a needle my six beads and then I'm feeding the needle back through because I just want a loop at the end and then I'm going to take a piece of rope and stick it through there and then tie it off like you would a tassel but before I do that I'm going to unravel the strands of the rope and then once you do that it kind of has this curly look to it it's kind of like when you would braid your hair while it's wet and then when you take it out it looks like you crimped your hair i always liked that look as a kid but anyway so i just kind of roll it in order to unravel it and then i just do that on all of the strands and then i'm going to grab it and tie it about a quarter of the way down with some jute twine and wrap it like a tassel and then just tie a knot in that and then I'm going to tie that to the handle of my basket and then I decided to give it a little haircut just to get it straight across at the bottom. So I think I'm almost hitting a world record with the longest video that I've ever done and so I'm sorry about that but I wanted to get all the steps in there. But in this time while you're watching, I did want to take a moment to say how appreciative and just in awe of everybody in this crafting family of ours. I have the latest prayer post up and I just love reading everybody's comments and the prayers that they're requesting, of course, but also the way everybody comes together and they encourage people that are having a hard time and even when you have problems of your own, you're encouraging others, you're praying for others. I love seeing all those thumbs up. I try not to comment on those because it's a place for prayer and it is called the community tab. So I just want that to be your area where you guys can come together and just unite as Christians knowing how powerful prayer is. And so I just love reading every single one of them, as well as the comments on the videos. I love the stories you share and your loving words of encouragement to me that just always makes my heart so full. So I just wanted to let you guys know that, that even though this is just a crafting channel, it's so much more and you guys have made it so very fulfilling and I just love every single one of you so anyway here's the basket and I just put a plant inside of it and this is gonna go in my sweet friend's house she's really having a hard time and going through it right now so I just want to bless her and while she's away on a retreat she's gonna come back to a completely different place and I'm really excited to share that with you guys too 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and please follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you have those. And I hope everyone is doing well. I love you all. Have a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.